And of course, as you can see, this is 100% a work in progress build of Turning Tides. The fact there are no textures in sight should tell you that straight away, but in case it wasn't clear, this is not a finished product. Now, I'm unsure why DICE decided to release an update without textures. This build will be live on the CTE tomorrow, Tuesday the 17th of October, for PC and console at exactly the same time, so GG to console players. But it looks very similar to how the Battlefield 4 community map project looked in some of its updates to the Battlefield 4 CTE back in the day. We went through multiple stages of the map having no textures before the developers were finally ready with it. But let's get down to business. As I said, during our testing session, we got to play on two maps. The first one was called Cape Hells, and this is a British landing during the Gallipoli Offensive, and the map fully reflects that, by the way. And the second one was called Achibaba, and this is a battle that happens further inland, and it's a fully infantry map. Now, we also got to play on the new mode for the DLC, but it's rather a returning game mode from the Battlefield franchise. It's called Conquest Assault. Now, this is a game mode that I think the last time we saw it was in the Battlefield 3 Back to Karkin DLC, which was about six years ago now. And to see it back in Battlefield 1, it actually took me a little bit by surprise, but it makes sense when you think about how it's implemented. Essentially, the defending forces start with all of the conquest flags on the map captured for their team. And the attacking team, they start with a 250 ticket advantage on their score. And the top score is 1000. As soon as the round starts, the attackers, they have to storm the map and try and overrun it and capture back as many flags as possible because, of course, the defenders starting at zero will start to rack up points very quickly because they hold all of the flags. The mode then almost returns to a pure conquest state with both teams fighting it out for flag control. And the round ends either when the score limit of 1000 is reached by either team or the attackers manage to overrun the entire map, capturing all the flags and killing all the enemies. And this leaves no defenders a spawn location, which means the attackers win because the defenders cannot spawn back in. Now, to be brutally honest, I'm not sure I actually enjoy the game mode all that much. On Cape Hells, as the British Marines, you spawn in as the attackers, and you have to take your boats and your planes and storm the shoreline and the rest of the map and try and take back those flags. But the defenders can simply spawn at the beach on the closest flag and then turn the map into an absolute slaughterhouse, which might accurately represent what happened at the Gallipoli landings, but... It doesn't make for fantastic gameplay. What happens after that is the planes sort of infiltrate further into the map, the attackers will take one of the flags further back, and then they're able to spawn from there, but the start of the round just feels... It doesn't feel great in terms of gameplay. I don't enjoy being killed over and over again by snipers just looking at me as I run through the water. It's not a great experience. And it was hard to really fully appreciate the game mode for what it was due to the map being basically incomplete. You don't realise how much a properly textured map can really affect the gameplay. All of those hiding places in foliage and behind rocks, blending into the background, those scenarios are gone. You stick out like a sore thumb. I would like to test the mode again, however, when the map is a little bit further ahead in development. At the moment, without textures, the game mode doesn't flow as well as I think it might do. The Cape Hells map in general, however, is an interesting one. There's lots of long lines of sight fighting up the hill, but there is a trench network that's dug into it that can be used by defenders and attackers looking to fight over different flags. And there's a ruined castle near the shoreline that makes for a great close quarters location. And up to the north of the map, there is a set of bunkers within direct line of sight of each other. I'm not sure how I feel about that at the moment, but once again, once textures are enabled and the grasses kind of obscure some of that vision, I might have a better idea, but at the moment you can look from one flag and see directly into the other. Moving on to the second map now, this is called Achibaba, and as I said, it's a fully infantry only map, and it's set up and away from the shoreline in sort of this canyon location. Large areas in between built up rocky outcrops are accessible to infantry and the Ottoman defences are sort of placed in and around those larger open areas. So there's certain bunkers, little outposts and things like that. Now the flow of the map is really really nice with lots of different routes for you to take in order to move around this map 
but I think it suffers quite badly from the same issue that plagues a lot of other infantry-only maps in Battlefield 1, and that's called Zerging. We played this on Conquest, not Conquest Assault, not the new game mode, just standard Conquest, and what happened is what happens on all other infantry maps. Players group together, sometimes 10 players or more, and they simply run around and capture flags together, and sometimes they'll clash with another enemy Zerg. And this does not make for any interesting gameplay whatsoever. If you try and venture off on your own, you're going to have a very tough time defending yourself. Groups of two or three players, now that makes things interesting if you meet another group of two or three players. But when ten players meet ten players, it just turns into a clusterfuck battle, and it's not really very fun. That being said, however, the new CTE weapon balance does improve your chances of winning gunfights. That was enabled in this build of the game. It's now possible to kill more than one player with your SMG magazine, thanks to improved weapon damage overall. And if you take damage as any class, as long as you have a good position and you're able to react to that damage, you can engage in a gunfight. And sometimes, if you've got good aim, you are now going to win the gunfight rather than somebody else just bullet sponging you and killing you because they've got more bullets than what you've got. I believe also that the Conquest Legacy rule set was enabled in the CTE, and that basically means that Conquest plays the same way as it did in Battlefield 4, where a majority of flags held by one team will award that team points towards their score. Even if the other team hold two flags and the enemy team hold three, the team with two, they don't gain any points because they don't have a majority. I believe that was active on Achi Baba, and it definitely changed the way that Conquest felt, although I think people are stuck in the mindset of playing Conquest in Battlefield 1, and they're still zerging around the map all the time, so we'll have to see how this one plays out. Now, I did mention in the title that there are some new weapons that you can play with in this CTE build. There are six in total right now, and I believe that might be the final number for this DLC, but we'll have to wait and see. As I said, everything is work in progress. So for the Assault class, you have the M1912 Stayer Fully Automatic Pistol and a C96 Trench Carbine. Now, both of these weapons look like pilot or tanker weapons, but DICE has chosen to stick them in the Assault class. The Medic has the British Farquhar Hill Rifle. I'm really happy to see that one. The support gets a Browning M1917 heavy machine gun set up as an infantry weapon, which is quite similar to the Perino from the Tsar DLC. And the Scout, they get two weapons as well. They get the Arasaka rifle and the Carcano rifle. I know Italian players will be happy about that one. Now, I've tested all of the weapons out, gave them some good playtime, and it's clear currently that the M1912 Stayer isn't quite balanced correctly. It can fire ridiculously fast, and it does a minimum 14 damage at range, so you can take people down at extreme long range very, very quickly. It's like a pistol automatico, and I have no idea why DICE would add another one of those into the game. It's pretty clear that the automatico is already a weapon that people don't really like, so I hope that DICE whack up the spread values on this new automatic pistol and keep this thing as an extreme close quarters gun. Now, the Browning machine gun, that has a 250 round box magazine, so you're just never going to have to worry about reloading. And both of the scout rifles, I believe, will be infantry variants, so only iron sights on them, although that's not confirmed. That's just what was available in this build. And again, as with the maps, the more time I have with these weapons, the better I'll get to know them, and by the end of this, all this testing in the CTE, I'll have a much better understanding of these new weapons, which ones are good and which ones aren't so good. And something else you might have noticed from the thumbnail, yes indeed, Anzac soldiers will be making an appearance in this DLC as a part of the British Royal Marines faction. The Medic class soldier will resemble an Anzac with their iconic hat and they'll be dressed in shirts and shorts of all things. I guess it was rather warm for them fighting over there, they would have had a different uniform. I'm sure lots of people will be happy about their inclusion and props to DICE for finding a way to slide them into this DLC.
And lastly, just to wrap up, we didn't get to test any new vehicles yet, so I can't give you any information there. We didn't get a look at the new Elite class, although there might be a hint of what that actually is. I'll make a video about that tomorrow. And we didn't see the grappling hook either, although Andrew Galotta answered my question on Twitter the other day, saying we should expect a hook in the DLC, but perhaps not in the manner that we're all thinking. So again, we'll have to wait and see on that one. So my overall first impression of the Turning Tides DLC is fairly positive, although I'm not giving you a proper opinion here because the maps aren't fully finished yet and it would be hard to judge something when it's not finished. Once DICE move along with production and inevitably update the CTE with more content and hopefully some textures sometime soon, I will jump back on again and we will be in a better position to know what this DLC is really going to look like. And no doubt we'll be seeing more content over the next month or so as DICE get closer to the DLC release date in September. And you guys know I'll be keeping you updated as much as I can right here on the channel, so look out for any future videos on the Turning Tides DLC. But thanks very much for watching today, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until